Hi there, I'm Colleen Taylor with TechCrunch TV. Drones have been a hot topic in the tech industry for a few years now, but it's really all hit a fever pitch this week with Amazon's Jeff Bezos hinting that his company might be getting behind the drone technology. But the folks from Matternet have been at the forefront of this uh, for a long time. So I'm very happy to have with us Paula and Andreas, who are the co-founders of Matternet. And when someone like Jeff Bezos comes out and, and gets so much press and publicity, and, and I think a lot of people in sort of the mainstream, this was the first they'd heard of drone deliveries of any kind. Is there any kind of moment when you woke up on Monday morning and said, ah, he stole my idea, he's getting all this credit, everyone thinks this is an Amazon technology, but you know, we at Matternet have been doing this for a long time. You know, what was your feeling like when, when this news came out this week? A big smile. Uh, I mean, the, the, the problem that we've been trying to solve is how can you really make an industry happen? And we adopted a, a frame of operation of extreme openness about the idea. So we've been out a lot talking about it, and we reached out to many, many people, um, you know, big industry players that are in e-commerce, are in you know, last mile delivery, in courier service, etc., to really open their eyes about how something like this can happen. So, you know, when you have someone like Amazon coming out publicly and saying, we want to do this thing, inviting a public debate around it, because, you know, frankly, um, you know, there's going to be a very interesting debate happening and not all of it is, uh, you know, cool-headed or sober, right? This is a, a matter that can be sort of taken advantage upon. And if we really sat down and really saw the opportunity here, it's a no-brainer. Uh, I mean, we have a biased opinion, right? Right. Uh, but uh, in, in our minds, I mean, there's very, very good arguments why this should happen. And so often in technology, what we've seen historically is that technologies get adopted at these really high, uh, expensive levels and then trickle down. You know, cell phones and laptops and computers used to be really high-end things. But what's interesting about what you all are doing at Matternet is you're you know, spreading this drone technology and realizing we have to start at the lower end in developing countries rather than from the super high end. What, why is that? What is the, the special challenge here? Well, I think that the special challenge here is that um, we want to focus first on what matters the most. So we've seen that in developing countries and poor regions, um, five pounds can really save a life. They can really mean um, increase the quality of life of someone, you know, or, you know, it, may, it can be a diagnostic, it can be something else. So we said, can we go to these countries first? And if we go there, what are going to be the challenges? What are going to be the barriers? And then what we have found is very low regulatory barriers to operate in these countries because there is a high need and most of these governments don't have the money to put, to um, build big infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen is a perfect environment to, number one, work with governments, work with NGOs, work with um, private, uh, the private sector to set up these big uh, transportation networks that you know will make a difference in the life of communities in rural areas and in places that are totally isolated. Mm -hmm. okay. So one, one of the founding principles uh, for, for Maternet has been take the most advanced technology where it's needed most. And we think that generally technology works best when it meets extreme need, right? And of course you have places of extreme need there. Uh, that doesn't mean to say that we can't find cases of extreme need here in the US. In fact, there are a lot of them. Uh, just to give you an extreme example, right? Um, imagine New York City after Sunday. You know, Instead of sending two helicopters, we could be sending 2,000 of those vehicles, maybe for the same cost and saving lives and transporting things right when you know the need is most extreme, when nothing else works, where everything else breaks down. Now, why does this technology, why does this you know, potentially new paradigm have these attributes of being able to help in those two extreme situations? Because that's what new paradigms do, right? When the old system is broken down, when we're thinking about heavy road infrastructure, heavy vehicles, you know, a new type of technology can totally come in that doesn't require this level of infrastructure and be flexible, have a very low sort of setup cost and setup time even. Um, so, you know, we view Maternet as one of those, um, you know, technologies that will allow us to bring transportation to this century. And so going with this mobile phone telephony kind of analogy, uh, 
Matternet would be sort of like the AT&T or something of this because you all aren't going to be actually doing the deliveries. You're figuring out the network and the, the system. Uh, we'd like to be the Apple of this space. So we would like to have a very well integrated, very well designed vertical system. In our case, it comprises of the flying vehicle, uh, the ground station, the docking station or the pad where it lands on, and then the software that runs the network and uh, be able to uh, provide this as a whole solution to somebody like Amazon, somebody like UPS, um, somebody like you know, Google in the future, where they say, okay, I need transportation links that are very efficient. I think this system can be good. And we say, okay, you take the technology and you run your network as you wish to run it. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're really interesting ideas, and I should be careful not to talk too much about that, is where you think about democratizing that. Right, so um, when technology has that disruptive effect, at some point it becomes you know, so simple to operate that you don't need intermediaries, and that's really interesting. Yeah, it's like uh, in our early conversations, um, it was like we were discussing, you know, like who unlocks you know, people to have access to stuff? And usually it's the government because they're the ones who build infrastructure and stuff, and then we said, but can, can you hack that? Can you hack that decision making? And this was when you know, Andreas got my imagination. I said, yeah, we can hack these guys because we don't need to wait for them to say, I'm going to put a road or I'm going to connect this community that has been landlocked, that people is poor. I'm just going to put one node here, one node there, and then just connect it. And then imagine you can have a very cheap, ultra flexible infrastructure moving thousands of dollars around when nothing else was there. So mm -hmm. then you can see the effect from, the exponential effect from zero to a thousand very easily and very fast. And when it doesn't make sense anymore to have this um, node in a second point, then you just take it out because it's an ultra flexible infrastructure. And Matternet is a small startup still. You have these big ideas, you've been doing TED Talks, you've done all these big things, but you're still, you know, in startup mode, can you give me the numbers? How big is your team? Is there sort of venture funding here? What's next for you guys as a company? Um, we have a small team, about a team of eight right now. We're based in Palo Alto. Um, we're going through some very exciting times right now uh, for you know, scaling up the team, building more technology, executing on more trials. Um, I think we are at the point where we're ready to really go aggressively at execution because we understood quite a, uh, a lot of the details of the different aspects of the problem including technology, including regulatory, including applications, including economics. customers, and the mm -hmm. economics of the, of the network. And uh, we really understood, I think, um, where the um, uh, secret sauce uh, ought to be. And also, I, I would say that, you know, we've been thinking about this for quite a, a long time now. And when suddenly you wake up and you, you know, you do a TED Talk, it gets uh, out and then your last line is the line that Jeff Bezos quotes on his presentation about Amazon Prime Air, then you say, we got his imagination. So uh, I'm really uh, excited to see how Matternet is scaling, not only in the developing world, uh, where actually we started to do trials, but also hear people's thinking along our lines. So that's great. Well, exciting stuff. Uh, Paula and Andreas, thank you for coming by TechCrunch. Thank you.